Hello students, I am Dr. Alok Simwar and today's topic of discussion is infrared spectroscopy. IR spectroscopy is the measurement of the interaction of infrared radiation with matter by absorption, emission or reflection. According to this definition, when IR radiation is incident upon any sample, it results in either absorption, emission or reflection. Study of absorbed radiation forms the basis of absorption spectroscopy, while the study of emission radiation forms the basis of emission spectroscopy. Infrared spectroscopy is used to study and identify chemical substances or functional group in solid, liquid or gaseous forms. Now we will understand type of transition in infrared spectroscopy. There are three main types of transitions. Rotational, vibrational and electronic transitions. These three types of transitions occurs because there are three main processes by which a molecule can absorb radiation and each of these routes involves an increase of energy that is proportional to the light absorbed. The first route occurs when absorption of radiation leads to a higher rotational energy level in rotational transition. The second route is a vibrational transition which occurs on absorption of quantized energy. This leads to an increased vibrational energy level. The third route involves electron swap molecules being raised to a higher electron energy which is the electronic transition. This diagram is showing three types of transitions in different energy levels. Each of these transitions differs by an order of magnitude. Rotational transitions occur at lower energies and this energy is insufficient and cannot cause vibrational and electronic transitions. Vibrational and electronic transitions requires higher energies. So rotational transitions occurs at longer wavelengths vibrational at near infrared and electronic transitions at ultraviolet region of electromagnetic radiation. So now it is clear that vibrational transitions occurs in infrared region of electromagnetic radiation. In this picture you can see different regions of electromagnetic radiation. These regions are gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared and radio waves. The region of importance here is infrared. Next is regions of infrared. There are three regions of infrared radiation. First one near infrared or overtone region. Second mid infrared or vibration rotation region. And the last one far infrared or rotation region. Wavelength of radiation in near infrared is in between 0.8 to 2.5 micrometer. In wave number domain, it is in between 12,500 to 4,000 centimeter inverse. Wavelength of radiation in mid infrared region is in between 2.5 to 50 micrometer. In wave number, it is in between 4,000 to 200 centimeter inverse. In far infrared region, wavelength region is in between 50 to 1,000 micrometer. In wave number, it is in between 200 to 10 centimeter inverse. Here the most used reason infrared spectroscopy utilizes the mid infrared region. Wavelength used is in between 2.5 to 25 micrometer. In wave number it is in between 4000 to 400 centimeter inverse. Next is principle of IR spectroscopy. When infrared radiation is incident upon a sample of organic compound, some of the frequencies are absorbed while others are transmitted. Plot of absorbance or transmittance versus wave number gives an infrared spectrum. Most preferred mode in infrared spectroscopy is transmittance mode. In this picture, you can see an absorption spectra in transmission mode. This is the original infrared spectrum of an alcohol 1-butanol. Because infrared spectroscopy deals in determination of functional groups, this spectra contains peaks for OH, CH and CO groups. Combinedly, these three peaks denote the presence of 1-butanol. 
requirements for any compound to absorb infrared radiation. There are two main conditions necessary for any compound to absorb infrared radiation. First is correct wavelength of radiation and second one electric dipole and dipole moment. First of all we will understand correct wavelength of radiation. Molecule absorbs radiation only when natural frequency of vibration of some part of molecule is same as frequency of incident radiation. For example, HCl molecule has a natural frequency of vibration at 2885.9 cm inverse. So HCl will absorb radiation only when radiation will contain this reason. If this reason is missing in incident radiation, HCl cannot absorb any kind of radiation. Second necessary condition is that molecule not only should contain electric dipole but also have to be in condition of dipole movement. An electric dipole is defined as a couple of opposite charges separated by a distance. An electric dipole moment is a measure of the separation of positive and negative electric charges within a system that is a measure of the system's overall polarity. For example, molecules like H2O, HCl and NaCl contains electric dipole. So these molecules will be infrared active. Molecules like O2, N2 and Cl2 does not contain any electric dipole. So these compounds will be infrared invisible. So the final verdict is that any compound will absorb infrared radiation only when it will fulfill these necessary conditions. Next topic of discussion is fundamental mode of vibrations in polyatomic molecules. Generally two types of changes occur in molecules which include molecular rotations and molecular vibrations. Molecular rotations are of very little use in analytical chemistry while molecular vibrations are very important in IR spectroscopy. The positions of atoms in a molecule are not fixed. They are subject to a number of different vibrations. These are known as molecular vibrations. Infrared radiation is largely thermal energy. It induces stronger molecular vibrations in covalent bonds, which can be understood by following example. Consider this spring holding two masses as bond holding two atoms. As we already know that specific bonds absorbs and respond to specific frequency and this causes change in their bond length. Change in bond length generates vibrational modes. In this picture, stretching mode is due to increase in bond length and compression mode due to reduction in bond length. Combinedly they are showing molecular vibration. So we can consider this fact that positions of atoms in a molecule are not fixed. They are subject to a number of different vibrations. Vibrations fall into two main categories, stretching and bending. Stretching causes change in bond length, while bending causes change in angle between two bonds. Types of molecular vibrations Stretching In stretching vibrations, the bond length increases and decreases at regular intervals. There are two types of stretching vibrations, symmetrical and asymmetrical. In symmetric stretching, bond length increases or decreases symmetrically, while in asymmetric, length of one bond increases and the other one decreases. Second type of vibration is bending vibration. Bending vibrations are also called as deformation vibrations. In this type of vibration, a change in bond angle occurs between bonds with a common atom. These are further subdivided into two types, in-plane and out-of-plane bending vibrations. Bending vibrations are of four types, rocking, scissoring, wagging and twisting. In a rocking, wagging or twisting coordinate, the bond lengths within the group involves do not change. The angles do. Rocking is distinguished from wagging by the fact that the atoms in group stay in the same plane. Rocking and scissoring are in-plane vibrations, while wagging and twisting are out-of-plane vibrations. In rocking vibration, bond angle is maintained 
but both bond moves within the same plane as in this picture this side in scissoring vibration bond angle decreases in wagging vibration both atoms move one side of the plane as we can consider in this example both atoms are coming towards us twisting vibration in which one atom is above the plane and other is below the plane as in this example one atom is coming near to us while the second atom is far away from us next is vibrations of polyatomic molecules a diatomic has obviously one type of vibration but in case of polyatomic molecules the scenario changes completely so here one question arises how many different ways can a larger molecule vibrate for this consider a collection of n atoms with no bonding between them each atom has 3 degrees of freedom corresponding to movement in x y and z direction like following atoms these atoms are having 3 n degrees of freedom for n atoms now join the atoms by bonds it will generate two types of molecules non linear molecule and linear molecule and because of this the movement will be restricted so in case of non linear molecule atoms will move along x y and z and they will rotate around x y and z so there will be three translations along x y z three rotations about x y z and 3n minus 6 vibrations where 3n is degrees of freedom for example water molecule contains three atoms so has 3n minus 6 vibrations in this case n is number of atoms which is 3 so putting the value of n in equation it becomes 3 into 3 minus 6 is equal to 3 vibrations now these three vibrations are symmetric stretch asymmetric stretch and bending vibration for linear molecule atoms will move along x y and z while they will rotate around only y and z here rotation around x does not correspond to a genuine motion of the molecule that's why we will consider only rotation around y and z so in this case there will be three translations along x y z two rotations about y and z and 3n minus 5 vibrations where 3n is degrees of freedom for example carbon dioxide contains three atoms and it is a linear molecule now because of its linearity it has 3n minus 5 vibrations where n is number of atoms putting the value of n in this equation it becomes 3 into 3 minus 5 is equal to four vibrations these four vibrations are symmetric stretch asymmetric stretch and two types of bending vibrations which are different from each other fundamental mode of vibrations in infrared spectroscopy not always occur at their right place so our next topic of discussion is factors affecting vibrational frequencies A molecular vibration occurs when atom in a molecule are in periodic motion while the molecules as a whole has constant translational and rotational motion. The frequency of the periodic motion is known as vibrational frequency. Molecular vibration is a periodic motion of the atoms of a molecule relative to each other such that the center of mass of the molecule remains unchanged. We can calculate modes of vibration for different types of molecules. In general, a non-linear molecule with n atoms has 3 n minus 6 normal modes of vibration, but a linear molecule has 3 n minus 5 modes. These formulas are different because in case of linear molecule, rotation about the molecular axis cannot be observed. There are several factors which affects vibrational frequency. These factors include coupling vibrations, Fermi resonance, hydrogen bonding, and electronic effects. First of all, we will discuss coupled vibrations. An isolated CH bond has only one stretching vibrational frequency whereas methylene group shows two stretching vibrations symmetrical and asymmetrical This happens because of mechanical coupling or interaction between CH stretching vibrations in the CH2 group Asymmetric vibrations occurs at higher frequencies or wave numbers than symmetric stretching vibrations These are known as coupled vibrations because these vibrations occur at different frequencies than required for an isolated ch stretching 
For example, a strong vibrational coupling is present in carboxylic acid anhydrides in which symmetrical and asymmetrical stretching vibrations appear in region 1720 to 1825 cm inverse. This interaction is very effective probably because of partial double bond character in carbonyl oxygen bonds due to resonance which also keeps the system planar for effective coupling. Here you can see resonating structures of an acid anhydride. In this case, this interaction is very effective because of partial double bond character in carbonyl oxygen bonds. This double bond changes its position because of resonance. There are several requirements for coupling effect. Like for interaction to occur, the vibration must be of same symmetry species. There must be a common atom between the groups for a strong coupling between stretching vibrations. For coupling of bending vibrations, a common bond is necessary. Interaction is greatest when coupled group absorb individually near the same frequency. Coupling is negligible when groups are separated by one or more carbon atoms and the vibrations are mutually perpendicular. So if any molecule fulfill these requirements, we will show coupling effect. Second factor which affects vibrational frequency is Fermi resonance. In some cases, due to resonance effect, a vibration of a large amplitude produced by a relatively small vibrations. Coupling of two fundamental modes of vibration with frequencies higher and lower than that observed in absence of interaction. Interactions can also take place between fundamental vibrations and overtone or combination tone vibration and such interactions are known as Fermi resonance. In this case, the lowest allowed natural frequency of vibration is known as fundamental vibration. While higher allowed frequencies of vibration above the fundamentals are called overtones. In this picture, top bands represent two fundamental vibrations without Fermi resonance. And the bottom bands show the change in bands as a result of Fermi resonance. The two energy levels are split such that one increases and the other decreases in energy. This is known as Fermi doublet and they move away from each other. In this case, intensity and frequency shifts due to Fermi resonance. So here you can see, this band shifts to the lower frequency region, while this band shifts to the higher frequency region. This is known as Fermi resonance. So we can say that if two different vibrational levels belonging to the same species have nearly the same energy, a mutual perturbation of energy may occur which shifts one towards lower and other towards higher frequencies. This effect is known as Fermi resonance. In this, a molecule transfers its energy from fundamental vibration level to overtone or combination tone level and back. So in this case, resonance pushes the two levels apart and mixes their character. Consequently, each level has partially fundamental and partially overtone or combination tone character. We will understand Fermi resonance by this example. According to theoretical calculations, carbon dioxide molecules have total number of 4 vibrations. These vibrations are symmetrical stretching, asymmetrical stretching, in-plane bending and out-of-plane bending. Symmetrical stretching produces no change in dipole movement, therefore it is IR inactive. Asymmetrical stretching, in-plane bending and out-of-plane bending produces change in dipole movement, therefore these are IR active. So active vibrations are 3. In this case, stretching vibration occurs at 1337 cm inverse and two bending vibrations occurs at same frequency which is 667.3 cm inverse. Because these two bending vibrations occurs at same frequency, the first overtone of this will be 667.3 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 1334 cm inverse. Now if we compare this region with the stretching vibrations, these are very close. And because of this, Fermi resonance occurs. Due to resonance, mixing of 1337 cm inverse and 1334.6 cm inverse gives two new bands at 1285 and 1388 cm inverse. Here you can see frequency shift. One towards lower and other towards higher frequency. Next factor is hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding occurs in any system containing a proton donor or a proton acceptor group. 
The stronger or longer the OH bond, the lower the vibrational frequency and broader and more intense will be the absorption band. For example, the NH stretching frequencies of amines are also affected by hydrogen bonding as that of the hydroxyl group but frequency shifts for amines are lesser than that for hydroxyl compounds. This happens because nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen so the hydrogen bonding in amines is weaker than that in hydroxy compounds. Intramolecular hydrogen bonds give rise to broad bands while intramolecular hydrogen bonds give sharp and well defined bands. The inter and intramolecular hydrogen bonding can be distinguished by dilution. Intramolecular hydrogen bonding remains unaffected on dilution and as a result the absorption bands also remains unaffected. Whereas the intermolecular bonds are broken on dilution and as a result there is a decrease in the bonded OH absorption. Last effect is electronic effect. Changes in the absorption frequencies for a particular group take place when the substrate in the neighborhood of that particular group are changed. Electronic effects which changes the absorption frequencies includes inductive effect, mesomeric effect and field effect. First is inductive effect. The introduction of alkyl groups causes plus I effect which results in the lengthening or the weakening of the bond. Hence the force constant is lowered and wave number of absorption decreases. Let us compare the wave numbers of absorption for the following compounds. Formaldehyde shows absorption band at 1750 cm inverse, acetaldehyde at 1745 cm inverse and acetone at 1715 cm inverse. In this example, absorption reasons decreases with increasing in electron donating groups. Here CS3 is an electron donating group. As the number of CS3 increases, the wave number of absorption decreases. Introduction of an electronegative atom or group causes minus I effect which results in the bond order to increase. Hence the force constant increases and the wave number of absorption rises. Next is mesomeric effect. The mesomeric effect in chemistry is a property of substrates or functional groups in a chemical compound. It is defined as the polarity produced in the molecule by the interaction of two pi bonds or between a pi bond and a lone pair of electrons present on an adjacent atom. Mesomeric effect causes lengthening or the weakening of a bond leading in the lowering of absorption frequency. For example, C11 O absorption frequency in benzamide is much less than in methyl benzoate. This is because nitrogen atom is less electronegative than oxygen atom. The electron pair on nitrogen atom in amide is more labile and participate more in conjugation. Due to this greater degree of conjugation, the C double bond O absorption frequency is much less in amides as compared to that in esters. Next is field effect. A field effect is the polarization of a molecule through space. The effect is a result of an electric field produced by charged localization in a molecule. In ortho substituted compounds, the lone pair of electrons on two atoms influence each other through space interactions and change the vibrational frequency of both the groups. This effect is called as field effect. For example, in ortho halo acetophenone, both CS3CO and X group are ortho to each other. Now because of the presence of lone pair of electrons, there occurs a change in the vibrational frequencies of both the groups. This effect is known as field effect. Next topic is instrumentation of infrared spectroscopy. Infrared spectrophotometers are of two types. Single beam spectrophotometer and double beam spectrophotometer. Single beam spectrophotometer uses a single beam of light which can pass through one solution at a time. In double beam instrument, a single beam of light splits into two separate beams. One passes through the sample, another passes through the reference. Modern dispersive IR spectrophotometers are invariably double beam instruments, but many allow single beam operation via a front panel switch. Radiation starts from the light source, then it is incident upon the sample, after that it goes to monochromator, then to detector. This is a double beam scanning IR instrument that makes use of a diffraction grating in a monochromator to disperse the different wavelengths of light. The key components are the light source, 
and translate grating and detector. Radiation from the source is directed along both sample and reference and then into the diffraction grating. The grating disperses the light into spatically separated wavelengths which are selectively directed by a narrow slit towards the detector. The wavelengths are measured one at a time. The grating and slit combination selects the wavelength being measured and the detector produces a spectrum of a plot of transmittance against frequency. IR spectrophotometer contains several parts arranged in a well-defined manner. These parts are radiation source, sample cells, monochromators, detectors and recorder. Infrared instrument requires a source of radiant energy which emit IR radiation. A good light source must have following characteristics. Light source should produce desired radiation with sufficient intensity. Radiation should be continuous and light source should be stable over a long period of time. Different types of light sources are used in infrared spectrophotometer. These light sources are the nursed clover, the global source, incandescent wire source, mercury arc, tungsten filament and CO2 laser source. Instruments for measuring infrared absorption all require a source of continuous infrared radiation and a sensitive infrared transducer or detector. Infrared sources consist of an inert solid that is electrically heated to a temperature between 1500 to 2200 Kelvin. The heated material will then emit infrared radiation. In this picture you can see nurse clover source. Nurse clover consists of cylindrical hollow rod or tube having a diameter of 1 to 2 mm and length of 30 mm. It is sealed by a platinum leads to ends to permit electrical connection. Nurse clover is composed of a mixture of rare earth oxides such as zirconium oxide, yttrium oxide and thoria. When it is heated to about 2000 degrees Celsius electrically it generates IR radiation. It provides maximum radiation to about 7100 centimeter inverse. Lifetime depends on the operating temperature and the care taken in handling. Next light source is global source. Global source is composed of a rod of silicon carbide usually about 50 mm in length and 5 mm in diameter. When this rod is heated to about 2000 degrees Celsius it provides radiation. Maximum provided radiation is within the range of about 5200 cm inverse. The power consumption is normally higher than that of nurse clover. Water cooling is needed to cool metallic electrodes attached to the rod. Global source is less convenient to use, more expensive and less intense than nurse clover. Next light source is mercury arc. Mercury arc provides radiation of far infrared region. It is a high pressure mercury arc which consists of a quartz jack tube containing mercury vapor at more than one atmospheric pressure. When current passes through the lamp, mercury is vaporized, excited and ionized forming a plasma discharge at high pressure. In far infrared region, it emits intense continuum radiation. Generally, there are three types of radiations. First is continuum spectrum second is emission line spectrum and third is absorption line spectrum. Here in this picture you can see a continuous or continuum spectrum. A spectral continuum occurs when the interaction of a large number of atoms, ions or molecules spread out all the discrete emission lines of an object so, so they can no longer be distinguished. Next part of the ion instrument is wavelength selector monochromator. A monochromator is an optical device that transmits a mechanically selected narrow band of wavelengths of light or other radiation chosen from a wider range of wavelengths available at the input. Monochromator is composed of an entrance slit, a collimating lens, a dispersing device usually a prism or a grating, a focusing lens and exit slit. Light radiation is passed through the entrance slit and incident upon dispersing device which usually a prism or grating. 
Dispersing device converts the light into its constituent wavelengths. Exit slit allows only a single wavelength of radiation to pass at one time. Thus monochromator converts polychromatic light into monochromatic light. There are two types of dispersing device used, prism or grating. In this picture you can see both devices. First one is prism and second one is diffraction and grating. Prism is made up of glass, quartz and silica and grating is made up of aluminium. Glass is avoided in the composition of prism because it absorbs radiation. Prism provides lower degree of dispersion while grating is used when higher dispersion is required. Here in this picture you can observe difference between dispersion produced by prism and grating monochromators. Prism provides lower degree of dispersion while grating is used when higher dispersion is required. Next part is sample holder. Sample holder is used for holding the sample. Sampling techniques in IR depend on whether the sample is a gas, liquid or solid. For gas samples, gas cell is used. For liquid samples, thin film is made by depositing on a hot surface. Solid samples are used by making KBR discs or deposited films or mold technique is used. Handling of gas samples. Here in this picture you can see a gas cell. Gas sample is inserted in this cell and then the cell is mounted in between infrared transparent windows. Internal mirrors are used which permit the beam to be reflected several times through the sample to increase sensitivity. More the number of reflections, more will be the sensitivity because it increases chances of interaction of IR radiation with the gas sample. In vapor phase rotational changes in molecule occur freely and these low frequency process can modulate the higher energy vibrational bands. Sampling of liquid samples. Liquid samples are analyzed by making a thin film squeezed between two infrared transparent windows like NaCl flats. The salt plates or rock salts flats must be optically polished and cleaned by using toluene, chloroform, etc. Salt plates should be dry and handled only by their edges. Thickness of the film can be adjusted by varying pressure used to squeeze the flats together and thickness can vary in between 0.01 to 0.1 mm. It consists of two windows of pressed salt sealed and separated by thin gaskets of teflon, copper or lead that have been wetted with mercury. Windows are usually made of sodium chloride, potassium chloride or cesium bromide. There are two cells, first cell containing sample and second one containing pure solvent placed in reference beam. By the reference beam, solvent absorptions re-cancelled out and spectrum recorded is that of solute alone. Grinding is done in an agate motor pistol or commercial ball mills. Poorly ground mixture lead to discs that scatter light then they transmit. Particle size of 2 micrometer must be achieved to avoid scattering. Compression of a cohesive disc acquired high pressure. Therefore, special dye are used from which air can be evacuated by hydraulic pressure. Discs thus formed are easy to handle. Solid sample can also be handled by mold technique. In this technique, mold is prepared by grinding the sample with a drop of oil. Then this mold is squeezed between IR transparent windows as for liquid samples. Mulling agent should ideally by Mulling agents should ideally be infrared transparent, but this is never true because it absorbs radiation of your specific wavelengths. Usually liquid paraffin, which is also known as nozole, is used to prepare nozole mulls, which is transparent over a wide range in IR spectrum. One another technique of handling solid samples is by making solid films of it. In this technique, sample is dissolved in volatile solvent and this solution is allowed to evaporate on a heated surface which leaves the films of the sample. Solid films can be deposited onto NaCl plates, which can be analyzed by putting it between IR transmitting windows. Polymers and various waxy or fatty materials often give excellent spectra in this way. Next important part of IR instrument is detector. An infrared detector is a detector that reacts to infrared radiation. 
it is simply a transducer of radiant energy. A transducer is an electronic device that converts energy from one form to another. Usually a transducer converts a signal in one form of energy to a signal in another. There are two types of detectors used in IR spectrophotometers, thermal and non-thermal detectors. Types of thermal detectors include bolometer, thermocouple and thermopile, pyroelectric detectors and Golay cell. Bolometer is derived from a Greek word bolometron in which bolo means something thrown and metrons means to measure. A bolometer consists of an absorptive element such as a thin layer of metal connected to a thermal reservoir through a thermal link. Thermal reservoir is generally maintained at a specific constant temperature. When any radiation falls on the absorptive element, it raises its temperature above that of reservoir. The greater the absorbed power, the higher the temperature. The temperature change can be measured directly with an attached resistive thermometer or the resistance of the absorptive element itself can be used as a thermometer. Next detector is thermocouple detector. Thermocouple consists of a pair of junctions of different metals, for example two pieces of bismuth fused to either end of a piece of antimony. The sensing element composed of small thermocouples on a silicon chip which absorbs the energy and produces an output signal. This detector works on the phenomena that when a closed circuit is formed by joining two dissimilar metals at two junctions and junctions are maintained at different temperatures then an electromotive force is induced in this closed circuit. This effect states that when a closed circuit is formed by joining two dissimilar metals at two junctions and junctions are maintained at different temperatures then an electromotive force is induced in this closed circuit. Next detector is pyroelectric detector. Pyroelectric detector is made up of single crystalline wafer of a pyroelectric material such as triglycerin sulfate. Pyroelectric materials contains property of pyroelectricity. Pyroelectricity can be described as the ability of certain materials to generate a temporary voltage when they are heated or cooled. The working of pyroelectric detector. Below Curie temperature, pyroelectric material exhibit electrical polarization. When radiation coming from the sample is incident upon this detector, the temperature is altered. Because of this alteration in temperature, the polarization changes which is observed as an electrical signal. Next detector is Golay cell. Golay cell is mainly used for infrared spectroscopy. It consists of a xenon filled enclosure with an infrared absorbing material and a flexible diaphragm or membrane. When infrared radiation is absorbed, it heats the xenon causing it to expand. The resulting increase in pressure deforms this membrane. A light continuously reflecting of the membrane is detected by a photodiode and motion of the membrane produces a change in signal on the photodiode. The detector detects the signal and a spectrum is produced by the recorder. Second type of detectors used in infrared spectrophotometers are non-thermal detectors. The response time and sensitivity of non-thermal or photonic detectors can be much higher but usually these have to be cooled to cut thermal noise. The material in these are semiconductors with narrow band gaps. Incident IR photons can cause electronic excitations. In photoconductive detectors, the resistivity of the detector element is monitored. Photovoltaic detectors contain a P-N junction on which photoelectric current appears upon illumination. When radiation coming from the sample is incident upon the photovoltaic detector, it generates a small voltage. This small voltage is detected as a signal. Generated voltage is proportional to the incident electromagnetic radiation intensity. 
These devices are called photovoltaic cells due to their voltage generating characteristics.